How's it going Eliminators? Today we're going to be working on a Craftsman pressure washer. So let's get right into it. So we got a Craftsman pressure washer here. It's got a Briggs & Stratton uh, 675 horsepower engine on it. And uh, my customer says it uh, starts up and then it dies. Let's see if this thing even fires up. As you guys could hear, uh, the thing fires up and then dies. So I'm gonna rip the whole thing apart. And uh, my guess is it's just uh, the main jet clogged up with something because uh, when you put it to full choke, it fires up and burns off the fuel that it sucks in and then instantly dies. Okay, so we're gonna start off, open up the air box and we're gonna remove the air filter here to get access at these two bolts right there and right there. And uh, we're gonna pull off this air box. Then we're gonna come up here and uh, probably pull off the top shroud using those Phillips screws up at the top there. Okay, using an eight mil socket, we were able to get the bolts out. So now you're gonna have to disconnect the overhead valve breather tube. You can just pull that out and your entire air box should come out like that. Okay, now I got the top Phillips screws out of the uh, top shroud here. You just want to uh, pull the pull start handle through there and that should pull right off. And now we have nice access at the carburetor and all of our linkage. Okay, first things first, I'm just gonna uh, inspect all the linkage. So we can see here we have uh, a spring and we have a spring also here. This is an air vane type governor. So it has a little plastic arm that goes up against the flywheel. As your flywheel spins, it creates uh, an air force pushing that way due to the fins on the flywheel. And it'll push this air vane governor out, which in turn, closes your choke when it's in neutral position. And then once your engine uh, builds up some RPM after running, you guys can see it'll push out and open up your choke. So this is called an auto choke system. This is probably the best one I've ever worked on because uh, normally there's no problems to it. And I'm also gonna be removing this uh, metal shroud over top of the uh, high tension lead or the spark plug wire. I've had numerous lawnmowers uh, come into me and on these Briggs and Stratton engines, uh, they've had uh, a no start situation. So you pull it and it doesn't get any spark at all. Uh, you go and you test the spark and it doesn't test anything. Uh, you rip these off, you stick the rubber boot that's inside of this metal shroud onto the spark plug and uh, they run just fine. So basically to do this guys, you just want to peel off these little tabs that you see here. Little tab there, there's a little tab there, up here, over there. So you can use a pair of needle nose pliers, pull those tabs off and then you should be able to split this open and just rip it right off. You don't even need that. So like I said, you just want to bend those tabs up just like that and you should be able to pull it right apart. And like I said, once you uh, get those tabs off, you should just be able to split it just like that, guys. And using a 13 16 spark plug socket, I've taken off the uh, RJ19 LMC spark plug off. You guys can see it's a little fouled, so it's a little darker than it should be, uh, and a little wet too, but uh, again, that's probably because of the unburnt fuel that was uh, inside of here and uh, whatever issue that uh, is causing this machine to uh, start and then stop. So uh, what we're gonna do is uh, just clean this up on the wire wheel and then we're gonna gap this to 30 thousandths of an inch using our spark plug gap tool. Okay, I've now gapped that to 30 thousandths of an inch so we're gonna put that back in. Okay, so we got the spark plug back in and uh, the metal shroud off of this uh, spark plug cap off. So now when you put this on, you can actually hear it click on and uh, it's nice and secure and you shouldn't have to worry about that interfering with spark. You guys wouldn't believe how many times uh, I've had customers bring me a lawnmower uh, with one of these engines on top of it and uh, you, you know you go to pull it and it doesn't start and I check for spark and it's got no spark so I rip that metal shroud off of that uh, spark plug cap and sure enough they fire right up. I'm not exactly sure why that happens. Uh, I think though uh, the reason is that uh, once this goes over top it actually prevents the spark plug cap from getting a good connection on the spark plug uh, because this metal shroud actually hits the spark plug itself. So uh, it, it kind of pushes this spark plug cap back even more to the point where it barely makes a connection. So again, removing that guys is a neat little trick. And uh, you know, I've never had a problem once I've removed it. Okay, so next up, we're gonna remove this uh, bolt right here. And uh, I believe that's a quarter inch. So we're gonna take that straight out so that we can just loosen off this uh, air vane governor and push it off to the side. 
and then we're going to go down here and remove our 3 8 bolts that hold our carburetor into position and we'll also disconnect our fuel line using a pair of pliers okay so here's a good little tip guys once you get this air vane governor off just kind of lift it up and try to get it out of the way because uh, if this spring disconnects from in there you got to take this whole shroud off and uh, you know it's uh, more work than you have to do so again just try to lift it up out of the way you can pull this bolt right out you don't need that and then you can get the carburetor off from underneath and uh, you shouldn't have to worry about you know taking your entire shroud off just to reconnect a spring and whatnot okay so I got the carburetor bolts off I've disconnected the spring from uh, this little post right there so now what we're gonna do is uh, disconnect the fuel line uh, because we have to get the throttle linkage off of the actual throttle plastic piece right there and to do that you have to rotate this and then pull it out you can't do that with the fuel line connected guys so we're gonna disconnect this fuel line uh, just giving it a couple twists and then we're gonna pull it right off and then we're gonna be able to disconnect this carburetor completely from the engine now if you're having a hard time getting your fuel line off you can use a pair of snips like these guys so what I like to do is just go in there just like this and then uh, just kind of pry it off and uh, as you go in farther your fuel line will come out farther because of the design of this uh, little wedge here neat little trick that makes uh, getting fuel lines like this off uh, sometimes you know the rubber uh, seizes to the aluminum and uh, they're kind of hard to twist off okay so I got the fuel line off but there is fresh fuel in the tank now I'm not sure if this tank is dirty uh, because there's a, a ton of fuel in it uh, he said that uh, he tried starting it and it would start and then die same thing that you guys saw in the video uh, so what I've done is just taken one of my uh, old uh, shutoff valves here and just stuffed it in there and uh, that'll prevent the fuel from coming out so uh, I can drain this into a jerry can after and then uh, inspect the tank and if the tank is clear then I can just put the the same fuel back into it and if the tank is dirty then that means I have to take all of this off which uh, I'll get to that after if I have to do that and again now that we have this fuel line off we can bend our carburetor to the point where it should just slip right off of that linkage there so you just want to bend it down and then pull it out now there's gonna be a little o-ring that goes onto the back of your carburetor so when I pulled the carb off this little guy fell out so what you want to do is just take this o-ring and wrap it over top of your intake manifold now that little tube here goes all the way back down into where the cylinder is so that's what brings your air fuel mixture into your cylinder and if you guys want to see me work on one of those intake manifolds you can click at the top right of your screen right now and you'll see a link to that video replacing a broken intake manifold okay so now that we have our carburetor off basically guys it's just uh two little levers here you have your throttle up here and your choke up here this is a you know very simple designed carb so there's no uh, air fuel ratio screws on it uh, there's no types of adjustments at all not even a jet at the bottom that you can uh, adjust so what we're gonna do now is uh, bring this over to the workbench and remove this half inch nut at the bottom and uh, pull the sediment bowl right off of this carburetor and to uh, remove that half inch uh, bolt there guys I have brought this over to my woodworking vise and uh, what this allows me to do is just uh, clamp the carburetor in there so that it doesn't damage the aluminum you can see that uh, our gasket uh, was ripped when we took that off so I'm gonna have to replace that but now I can bring this over to the workbench and uh, disassemble it okay so we've disconnected that and you guys can see the other piece of the gasket there that's no big deal a little bit of crud came off of it too we also have our sediment bowl here and you guys can see there's not a lot of stuff in it now this one's got a plastic tank so there is no rusty gas inside of it which is nice but it also doesn't have an inline fuel filter uh, my guess is it has a fuel filter on the pickup inside of the fuel tank but we can see here there's uh, a little bit of debris in the bottom of this sediment bowl and uh, to get this carburetor apart guys you're just gonna come over here and push out your little rod pull that right out put that off to the side and then we can lift up our float with our needle valve underneath it and put that off to the side and now we can have a little closer inspection of the carburetor little bit of uh, dirt and debris inside of there we can see here there's a little bit of film of gasoline over top of the uh, seat where the needle valve goes all in all this carburetor looks fairly clean so uh, what I'm going to do is uh, get some hot water into my ultrasonic cleaner. 
Uh, again, guys, if you don't have an ultrasonic cleaner, what you want to do is blast all of these holes with a bottle of carb cleaner. So go and get yourself a can of this stuff, guys. It's a carburetor cleaner. You can get it at uh, like your Napa, any store that uh, deals with uh, engines or uh, you know hardware stores. You can probably get it too. But uh, go ahead and get yourself one of these and uh, take that plastic nozzle there and force it into uh, any of those jets and just blast all the stuff out of there. You guys want to make sure that you get this carburetor as clean as you possibly can. And that's why I have a nice piece of paper towel down. So that once I take this apart and then go to put this back together, I want a nice clean workspace so that I'm not picking up anything like these little bits of gunk inside of this carburetor. Okay, and I've pulled off the uh, sediment bowl gasket here, and uh, we know that uh, this carburetor bowl doesn't leak because, well, the fuel tank had fuel in it, and uh, this bowl here wasn't leaking, so we can reuse that. Uh, so far, the only thing we have to replace is that gasket at the bottom there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this carburetor and that brass piece back there into the ultrasonic cleaner and get this all cleaned up. Okay, now this main jet here, we can see that uh, they got some kind of safety device on it. So it's like an anti-tamper device where it's only got uh, one side onto it. Now, if that had a good slot into it, that would mean that it was removable. So I would be able to take that main jet out so that I could further clean it and make sure that it's uh, as clean as possible. But uh, because I can't do that, guys, we're just going to leave it in there and hope that the ultrasonic cleaner gets it all clean. Okay, so now I've got the uh, carburetor, the sediment bowl, and our little uh, metering jet at the bottom there into uh, a solution of hot water and a little bit of my uh, industrial degreaser. And uh, we got this on the ultrasonic cleaner here. I'm going to put this on for about 15 minutes and uh, come back when it's done. We'll see what it looks like. Okay, so I got the carburetor all cleaned up now, and uh, I've taken the compressor and blown it out. Now, uh, you guys want to make sure that, uh, again, all of these little holes are clear. So uh, what you can do is get yourself uh, like a pipe cleaner or anything else, but you want to make sure that all these little holes, guys, are clean and free of debris. We also got the sediment bowl here now. That's all cleaned up. So we're going to put this back together the uh, opposite way of how we took it apart. We're going to drop this guy because this was clean. We never had to do anything to this. We're going to drop that down right like that. We're going to pop our rod through, put our gasket on, take our bowl, get that on, get our gasket onto here, and then tighten that all up. Okay, so we got our carburetor all cleaned up now. First thing we're going to do is the last thing we did. So now we're going to uh, hook up the throttle linkage. And uh, to do that, again, you're just going to pop that throttle linkage right in there and then uh, bend it up so it's secure. Hook up our fuel line, and then we could uh, bolt it back up to the engine and then get our air vane governor bolt it up to right there. Okay, so once you get your linkage onto your carburetor, just like that, we'll go ahead and uh, remove my little fuel valve here and uh, plug this in and get our fuel line clamp onto it. And then we'll go ahead and get those 3 8 bolts onto the engine there. Okay, so now you just want to make sure again that you have your little O-ring in there. We're just going to push that up there, make sure it's got a nice little seal. We can go ahead at this point before we put our bolts in or after, it doesn't matter, and uh, hook up your spring to that little loop right there. Now you just want to make sure that when you go ahead to hook up your spring right there, you want to make sure that the end of it is on that loop. So you want to make sure that it's not on the back loop. You want to make it just like that, guys. Okay, so once you get your bolts to secure your carburetor all tightened up, now we're going to go ahead and take our air vane governor here. We're going to bring it over here. You're going to take this little post right there and you're going to slip it in between this little fork right there. And then we'll go ahead and get our bolt and secure that in place. Okay, so once you get your bolt tightened up, you just want to make sure that it works. So just give it a couple twists. Now it should have the choke on in the default off, not running position. Uh, you will only get it to, to go off of choke once you run it. So uh, just by pulling it won't really uh, do it. This machine actually has to run to create enough air force to uh, open that choke up. We can see that the spring is still connected and we didn't have to remove this top shroud, which was nice. So now what I'm gonna do is uh, put the air box back on. We're gonna hook up the uh, breather tube to the air box first and then get our screws secured right into the carburetor there. And looking at the back of this air box, you guys can see that there is a gasket on the back of this. Now, uh, this one's still in good shape. Um, I shouldn't have to replace it. It looks uh, pretty good to me. 
So uh, we're going to go ahead and reuse that one. Again, just to inspect that gasket. If there's a rip or a tear in it, just replace it, guys. So looking straight down in between the air box and the carburetor here, uh, you just want to make sure that you don't rip or tear that gasket. So my advice for doing this, guys, is uh, just kind of push it on and then uh, half tighten one bolt, half tighten the other, and then kind of go back and forth in between the two. What you don't want to do is tighten one all the way down and then go to the other side and tighten that one all the way down because what you'll actually do is warp and distort that plastic and you could end up tearing your gasket and remember guys uh, these bolts here are going into an aluminum carburetor so you want to make sure that they're tight but don't crank them down to the point where they're gonna strip now if you want to just snug them up and use a little bit of blue Loctite you can do that they do come with Loctite from the factory so that shouldn't be a problem. The air filter here seems to be in uh, good condition and uh, it's fairly clean. It's also got a little bit of oil onto it, which is good. That'll uh, trap a lot of the fine dust from getting inside of the carburetor. So we're just gonna pop that back in there. Now we might have to remove this uh, just to spray a little bit of carb cleaner into that carb because uh, when you uh, clean a carburetor, you're getting all the fuel out of it. And when you fill your tank, uh, there might be a little air pocket in between the fuel line and the carburetor that will prevent your fuel from uh, filling the, the bottom uh, sediment bowl. So basically you'll be pulling and pulling and pulling and your machine won't start. So uh, you might have to, uh, what, what's known as priming it, and basically you just want to take this off, spray a little bit of carb cleaner in there, give it a pull, it'll fire, and the, the suction that it creates will draw fuel from your fuel tank back into your carburetor. But for now, we're just going to close this up and uh, go ahead and get our top shroud on it. And just for reference, guys, the model number is this right here, 126MO2-0344-F1. There's your code, you guys can see. It was made October 2014. Okay, so I filled up this uh, fuel tank here about halfway with some premium grade fuel, and I'm gonna be putting in just uh, about a cap full of uh, this K100. Uh, I'm gonna be doing a full video of this stuff, guys, but uh, basically their motto is make water burn. So because this is a pressure washer, uh, you're gonna be around a water source, and uh, just in case any water does get into this tank here, uh, this K100 actually turns water into burnable fuel. Pretty crazy stuff. That K100 stuff literally turns water into fuel. Uh, so stay tuned for that because I'm going to be doing a full video on it where I take a clear jug, we're going to pour some water into it, we're going to pour a little bit of fuel into it, and then we're going to add some K100, stir it up, and you guys are going to see the water turn into fuel. And basically that just gives us a little bit of guarantee that if our customer does get a little bit of water into the fuel tank, it shouldn't matter. Okay, and the last step is we're going to go ahead and get our craftsman uh, top shroud on again just want to pull that uh, pull start handle right through that slot there should be able to get that on and then go ahead and get your two phillips screws and secure this into place now before you bolt that up there is a little slot underneath here at the back so you just want to make sure that you pop that in and this should be nice and flush just as you see it now then you can go ahead and get your screws installed okay so now that the carburetor is all cleaned and we got uh, fresh fuel into the fuel tank what we're gonna do now is uh, bring this down outside, hook it up to the hose again, because you don't wanna be running these things when they're uh, dry. Uh, we're gonna run it just for a couple minutes, let the uh, oil inside of here warm up, and then I'll show you how to drain the oil. Well guys, this thing runs awesome now. So uh, the oil should be warmed up, so let's get this oil changed. And using Briggs & Stratton's oil capacity PDF chart, which you can see here on screen now, we can see that it takes uh, 22 fluid ounces of 10W30 motor oil, or 650 milliliters. Now I couldn't see an oil drain plug at the bottom of this engine, and I even looked underneath. So what I'm gonna do is uh, most likely remove this shroud again, just to get uh, this piece out of the way from the side right over here and we're gonna remove the dipstick. We're gonna tilt this on its side and uh, using just a, like one of those cooking pans that I've showed you before, we're gonna put this up against the side as we tip it so that we don't get oil all over the side of this thing. That's probably gonna be the easiest way to change this oil. Okay, and like I said, using a little cooking pan, we flip this on the side. We're gonna let the oil drain out and uh, it drains out a lot easier guys when uh, the engine's been warmed up and uh, once this finishes uh, dripping out we'll probably lift this up just a little bit more to uh, get all of it out and then we'll put 650 milliliters 
of fresh 10W30 oil into it. But keep in mind guys, there might be, uh, oh, I'd say like 10% of uh, the old oil still on the bottom of that engine. You're never ever gonna get all that oil out. So instead of putting 650 milliliters of oil into the machine, what you're gonna wanna do is uh, start low, so you could start maybe with 500 milliliters, 550, and then slowly add as you go, letting your machine sit, checking the dipstick regularly. This will ensure that you don't overfill your uh, machine with oil so that you'd have to tip it back up again and uh, you know go through the whole process of draining oil out of it again. Because I've always said guys, it's a lot easier to add oil than it is to uh, take it out because you know how much you're adding versus dumping it all in and then trying to eyeball how much you're taking out. Okay, and the oil I'm gonna be using today is some premium Pennzoil 10W30. I only use premium oil, we don't cheap out. And what I'm gonna do is take some from the big jug here and we're gonna put it into a smaller jug here that had 10W30 oil into it. But basically guys, I use this because I can measure out a select amount. So again, we're gonna be using 650 milliliters, which should be right about there. And we'll start off by putting about 600 into it. And then we're gonna slowly add oil just until the point where we're in between those two holes, guys. So the bottom hole there is your add. So that lets you know when you have to add oil and your top hole is gonna be your full. So that lets you know that you're full. So basically guys, a little rule of thumb is you just wanna end up in between those two holes. And on the other side, you can see, here's the arrows that tell you that. Okay, so I've wiped off the dipstick. We're gonna put that back in and we're gonna let this thing sit for a couple minutes, guys, just to let all that oil settle down the dipstick tube and then get an accurate reading of how much oil is in this engine. Thing runs awesome guys. I got it running outside now just to circulate that new oil that we got into it. Now I checked the oil before I started it up just to make sure that everything was good and the oil was right in between the lines. So I just wanted to circulate that oil. Probably gonna add just a little bit more, but that's it guys. This thing runs awesome. So now this machine runs like it's supposed to. Well, that's it for today, guys. Just a quick little video on uh, how to do a carb clean and oil change on a Craftsman pressure washer. So here's what it sounded like before when uh, the customer first dropped it off to us. And then here's what it sounded like after Eliminator Performance worked on it. So you guys can see clearly there's a big difference there. So that pressure washer is ready to be returned back to our customer. He's gonna be very happy with uh, our results. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to leave us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe. You can click here to do that and click over here for one of my previous videos. I upload every week, so be sure to uh, come back and check out what I got new on the channel. And as always guys, thanks for watching.